Hi, in today's session we will discuss the stability concepts. So before going into the concepts, one assumption I take is you know Laplace transforms okay. and inverse Laplace transforms. Okay. So if you don't know, just please revise them. At least uh, this is fundamental. Right? Now, so assuming you know the Laplace transforms, so I start with a question. A system is given to us where this is the system <coughs> x of t is my input and y of t is my output right and the system is characterized by the impulse response h of t okay sir so the question is is the system stable so how to answer this question I do a simple test to check the stability of the system okay what is that step what I do is I apply a bounded input okay and I check the output and I expect a bounded output At the input side, I am applying a bounded input and at the output side, if I am getting a bounded output, then I conclude that the system is stable. Very simple test. Okay? Again, I introduced you a new term, bounded. What is bounded? Bounded is something uh, which is present between any two values. right? Say for example, I have a signal, step signal like this is it bounded yes how I am saying the bounded because it is having minimum value of 0 and maximum value of 1 right say I will take one more signal okay. e power a t is it bounded no it is not bounded because its maximum value is infinity right so now we can define what is a bounded signal and what is unbounded signal right if any signal is taking plus or minus infinity values then i can call it as unbounded signal right so again we go back to our original test right apply a bounded input so for the sake of simplicity what i do is i always choose to apply impulse signal at the input which is bounded in nature okay so why why i am choosing to apply impulse signal at the input because the relationship between x of t h of t and y of t is y of t is equal to h of t convolution with x of t okay if i apply laplace transform then y of s becomes h of s into 1 the Laplace transform of impulse signal is 1 that means y of s is equal to h of s where h of s is nothing but the transfer function of the system the transfer function of the system okay if I find out the inverse Laplace transform which is nothing but my y of t okay then i can conclude whether the system is stable or not okay <coughs> so first reason why i am impulse signal why i am applying impulse signal is that the output what i am getting is transfer function of the system which is readily available correct since it is readily av available I can easily find out the inverse Laplace transform of H of S to determine the stability. Right? So, inverse Laplace transform of output is nothing but inverse Laplace transform of your transfer function. 
okay now let's take a system see a system is defined with uh, h of s is equal to 1 by s plus 2 okay the question is determine whether the system is stable or not okay so as you said now i don't apply impulse signal here i assume that i have applied okay just now we discussed if i apply impulse signal at the input what is the output that you are getting output is nothing but y of s is your h of s correct so now your output y of s is equal to your h of s which is nothing but 1 by s plus 2 right find out the inverse laplace transform y of t is equal to e power minus 2t okay we know how e power minus 2t will look like so this will look like something like this okay what is the maximum value one what is the minimum value zero perfect so it is bounded so since your output is bounded just you can say my system is stable or the given system is stable okay for example take second case say h of s is equal to 1 by s minus 2 okay so directly find out the inverse Laplace transform of h of s which is e power 2t if I plot e power 2t this is the output it is unbounded so I conclude that system is unstable okay so <coughs> every time I have to take the inverse Laplace transform is there any easy way just to conclude the stability of the system based on few observations yes sir what i do is if h of s is given then i simply locate the poles okay this is my s plane this is real axis this is imaginary axis for the first system what is the transfer function if you remember it is 1 by s plus 2 okay what is the pole of this system poles are s is equal to minus 2 so where minus 2 will be present here okay minus 2 right but the second system what is the transfer function 1 by s minus 2 so what are the poles poles are at s is equal to 2 so s equal to 2 is present somewhere here okay so now i am generalizing something if your poles are present <coughs> in left half of s plane so everywhere here then the system is stable on the other side if the poles of the system are present on the right half of s plane every, anywhere in right half of s plane then the system is unstable i have taken only two examples to show you okay i can take multiple examples for example okay uh, i do the reverse engineering now this is sigma j omega say for example the poles are somewhere here with real part minus 2 minus 1 and the imaginary part as j2 minus j2 if these are the two poles can you calculate the signal in time domain right so if those are the two poles <coughs> so the two poles are 1 by s plus 1 minus j2 into s plus 1 plus j2 right okay so it is 1 by s plus 1 whole square plus 4 correct so approximately this is say i am not adding say here if you add plus uh, sorry 1 by 2 here into 2 here 
I can write this as 1 by 2 into uh, e power minus t cos 2t. Okay. So if you know the Laplace transforms, this is easy for you. Right. So draw the plot the signal. <coughs> so if you plot the signal, it will look like something like this. So obviously, you are having finite maximum value, finite minimum value. So that's why in the previous slide, you take 100 examples with the different locations of poles, you get the same conclusions. If the poles lies in the left half of S plane, the system is stable. If the poles lies in the right half of S plane, the system is unstable. Okay, very easy to conclude the stability rate. Here lies the problem. For example, I have a system which is like s power 3 plus 3 s square plus 2 s plus 5. This is the transfer function because my system is having three poles. Can I calculate or can I conclude something on the stability? To do that, first I have to find out the roots of this equation which are poles. That means poles location is important. If, if I know the poles location easily, <coughs> sorry, I can conclude something on the stability. Okay. That means now the stability issue has boiled down to the roots of the equation. Right? So, <coughs> for uh, so to some extent, I can do that. Right? But for many practical systems, okay, I want a simpler procedure than this instead of finding the roots of the system. Right? Is there any way? Okay, so the solution is Bode plots. The solution is Bode plots. Okay, so what is this Bode plot? So directly I go to this slide. <coughs> a system is given okay, which is connected in negative feedback configuration. So you never use any system in open loop configuration. So in subsequent lectures, okay, uh, you will uh, come to know what is the significance of this closed loop configuration, what are the advantages, disadvantages, problems. Actually, this is a brief video on stability and how you correlate this stability concepts with the op amps that you know. Okay. But in subsequent lectures, you get all the explanation for uh, uh, negative feedback concepts. Right? Now you have a system H of S which is connected in negative feedback configuration. Here where beta is your feedback factor. Now I find out the transfer function because ultimately what I am looking at least in this presentation is the stability. To find out the stability, I have to find out my overall transfer function. Now this is my overall transfer function. Okay. So if I know the transfer function, now I equate this denominator to 0 to get the poles. Based on the poles location, I judge the location, I uh, judge the stability of the system. Now, <coughs> as I said, instead of using that approach, what we do is, now we closely observe this transfer function. <laughs> Okay, so if I closely observe this transfer function, at least this denominator, what happens if beta h of s becomes minus 1? Okay, so if beta h of s becomes minus 1, somehow I am getting infinite gain. So if I am getting infinite gain, even without any input, my system will oscillate. Correct. So actually, I am uh, doing something to get a conclusion on a measure of stability. Okay. So what I am doing, say for example, uh, this is a bridge. Okay. So this side of bridge is full of water. This is full of water. Uh, the width of bridge is say uh, 10 meters. 
okay this side there is no water okay it is safe this side there is no water it is safe now a person is standing exactly in the middle okay so if you stand at the edge of this bridge at this location left side location definitely you will fall into the water you will die okay so what is the margin that this person is having from the edge of the bridge 5 meters correct so this 5 meters is the margin say another person is standing in the right corner so what is the margin that he is having 10 meters margin from the danger for example another person is standing exactly here on the left bank of uh, bridge definitely zero margin high probability that he may fall into the water correct so what we are doing is we are taking a condition of beta into h of s is equal to minus 1 as the edge okay this condition is nothing but the left bank of this uh, bridge you are measuring how far you are from this left bank of bridge so you are measuring how far you are from this particular condition that's why you often hear the terms gain margin phase margin so the margin you are getting here how far you are from the danger right so now actually what we are doing here here we are taking beta into h of s which in open loop system okay we are analyzing the stability of the system closed loop system using open loop transfer function beta into h of s is open loop transfer function now using this simple open loop transfer function you are trying to comment on the stability of the system right so now consider a system okay so <coughs> now uh, we define two new terms uh, before uh, considering this gain crossover frequency phase crossover frequency gain crossover frequency is the frequency at which the magnitude of loop gain is 1 and phase crossover frequency is the frequency at which the phase of loop gain is minus 180 degrees okay it appears to be two new terms but we see slowly okay just uh, I have a two pole system open loop system okay this is my open loop system just don't get confused here i have open loop system which is of no use i have to connect this open loop system and feedback i get closed loop system but finding the closed loop system stability using traditional method by some for some reason i don't like it i want a new method so in the new method what i am doing i am taking the open loop system okay i am trying to measure the stability so assume my open loop system transfer function is like this 1 by s by p1 into 1 by s plus p2 assume it is having a gain of a0 dc gain okay so you know how to draw the body plots if you don't know in subsequent lectures we will discuss okay but for time being i plot the body plots so this is dc gain this is pole p1 this is pole p2 okay and if i plot the phase this is magnitude plot okay if i give it is 20 log a naught and this is magnitude and this is phase which is in decrease this is frequency so the phase plot will be something like this so at infinity it reaches minus 180 degrees now <coughs> what is that we are defining here first gain crossover frequency in the magnitude plot try to see where gain is 1 or 0 db so this frequency is your gain crossover frequency 
gain cross over frequency okay what is phase cross over frequency so you check for minus 180 degrees okay so i have taken only two pole system here right so only at infinity frequency you get minus 180 degrees phase shift right so that infinity frequency becomes your phase cross over frequency here okay in three pole systems you get a clear understanding right so now how we are defining the stability what we are doing is at gain cross over frequency you measure the phase of the system you measure the phase of the system okay so here the phase margin i define as 180 degrees plus the phase of the system at gain cross over frequency for example say if the phase at gain cross over frequency is minus 135 degrees then phase margin is equal to 180 plus minus 135 so it is 45 degrees as i said just correlate this phase margin concept from this bridge example what phase margin of 45 degrees is saying you are only 45 degrees away from the danger okay why i have taken 180 degrees because you if you remember beta into h of s is equal to minus 1 that means magnitude of this open loop transfer function is equal to 1 and phase of this open loop transfer function is equal to 180 degrees that's why when gain is 1 you are checking the margin with respect to phase that is what phase margin is hope you are understanding at omega gc what is the gain 1 so you fixed the gain now at this gain you are comparing your phase with respect to the danger of 180 degrees border okay so at omega or uh, gain cross over frequency if your phase is minus 135 degrees your phase margin is only 45 degrees okay on the other hand say if phase is around say minus 120 degrees then phase margin is equal to 180 plus minus 120 which is 60 degrees so your distance from the danger has increased now okay so higher the phase margin higher the safe you are more the safe you are higher the stable the system is okay see how we have uh, moved from the concept of location of closed loop poles to the phase margin okay so higher the margin higher the safe you are higher the system mm, stable higher the stable the system is now i correlate this with the time domain equations okay say blindly a system is given to me and they said that phase margin is 45 degrees okay then the step response will look like something like this okay if phase margin is 60 degrees then step response will look like something like this if phase margin is 90 degrees step response will look like this say if phase margin is 0 degrees okay then you can expect like this oscillatory output step response your output is oscillator correct okay so this is how we are trying to measure the stability of the system okay so now how we can correlate uh, this concept to our two stage amplifier okay so i am having two stages here okay so two stage amplifier so what is this two stage amplifier you can take this most frequently used amplifier because you know this amplifier right current mirror load differential amplifier so this is first stage and the second stage is simple common source amplifier okay assume you have taken <coughs> so i'm not
not giving all the values but you are familiar with this particular circuit right so this is first stage and this is second stage okay in open loop because i am checking the stability of the system using open loop configurations only right now i want to measure the stability of the system right so obviously if i don't go in depth i can consider each stage gives me single pole one one pole so i can correlate the transfer function okay just to the first approximation as a two pole system like this the same approximation okay i can measure the stability how i calculate a0 how i calculate p1 p2 from this circuit is different thing that we will study anyway okay so what we are doing is we are correlating the stability analysis of circuits with the general theory okay now <coughs> just now we discussed for a two pole system how to calculate the phase margin right now i am not satisfied with this phase margin okay what should i do so there is a famous uh, method well known uh, method we call as miller compensation okay so what is miller compensation is just connect a capacitance across the second stage from input to output then what happens so to understand this first one should know what is miller theorem okay so <coughs> the same thing i am redrawing here this is a1 this is a2 okay so we follow the procedure okay the same capacitance c can be split into input side and output side something like this c into 1 plus a2 c into 1 plus 1 by a2 which is approximately c okay so <coughs> if i connect a capacitor across the second stage the first stage sees a capacitance which is c into 1 plus a2 more capacitance so what is happening originally this is the bode plot right now what you are doing you are intentionally moving pole 1 towards left side how pole 1 is moving left side pole 1 is proportional to 1 by r into c okay say so call it as r1 c1 where c1 is the total capacitance that is seen at the output okay and r1 is the total impedance that is seen at the output of first stage so now intentionally you have increased c1 right since you have increased the c1 value pole 1 value will reduce that means pole 1 is moving left side okay now if pole 1 is somewhere here okay now can you draw uh, the body plot yes so just draw the body plot okay so what happened right so in simple terms instead of body plot just by common sense think uh, what is the phase contribution of pole 2 at UGC Okay, so that value you are decreasing. Okay, if you understand from the diagram point of view, so this is the pole location before compensation. What you are doing after compensation, you are making only one pole as low frequency pole, another pole as high frequency pole. Okay, so the distance you are increasing. Right. So, because of which, say now just for the sake of understanding, now I can consider this as a single pole system. Okay. 
Now, if it is a single pole system, definitely the net phase is very less. Correct? So, this is how you are increasing the phase margin. Right? Intentionally, I am not going or I am not touching the in depth of uh, uh, these circuits and the Miller compensation. The only reason why uh, I am discussing these topics is the stability analysis. What is the flow actually from where we have started and why we are going for Bode plots? Okay. If you are comfortable with plotting Bode plots and if you are comfortable with correlating the poles and DC gains with the given op-amp circuits, right? Then easily we can do all the modifications that we want. Okay, like improving the stability, for example. Right? So these type of modifications, okay, tweaking easily we can do. Okay. So in the next session, uh, we study more on stability analysis. So what I do is I take a amplifier, okay, which is uh, more familiar to you. Now I make apple to apple comparison, okay, and I discuss more about this Miller compensation, okay, and the problems and again how to overcome those problems.